He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. Uh, that was a terrific conversation we just had with Wayne Rodolfich, and he said some really kind words about the work that he's doing with our next guest. Paige Roberts, the president and CEO of the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce, who's joining us from, I guess, the chamber offices over in Jackson County. How are you doing via Skype, Paige? Well, I'm well. I'm actually in the Family Interactive Center, which is Wayne's uh, creation, because he was so gracious to allow us to host our blood drive here. So actually, I'm I'm in the play area for the young kids. <laughs> All right. You know, he... He, that's a, that's a wonderful brainchild of his. What an amazing yes. place that is, isn't it? Oh, very much so. And I'm thrilled to be here and how appropriate that you were on with Wayne because Wayne and I um, worked together at Pascola High School 20 years ago and have continued working together in a variety of ways ever since. Yeah, he is a, he's a, he's a fu- fundamentally excellent leader and the work that they're doing to um, to try to keep in touch with the kids and to keep the, the food program going and yep. the planning that they're doing to get ready for once this, I call it an elongated response period, once it's over and we're on the other side of this, you know, how do we get back up on our feet as fast as possible in our new normal? I know you're giving a lot of thought to that too, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, in fact, as you and I both know from our Hurricane Katrina days, it's almost easier to deal with rising water and blowing wind. Um, I could even handle a disaster of something falling out of the sky more <coughs> easily than this. Um, this is a very unique situation we find ourselves in with some commonalities to disasters we've known, but but most of it just with no playbook. Yeah, what's so interesting about this one is that whereas Katrina, it hit a region and we had the rest of the United States and the world to that matter to come and help us. In this case, the pandemic is is affecting everyone in the world. And so I think to some extent, and we've talked about this on all of the shows that I've had over the last three or four weeks, that it's in our DNA to be resilient. It's in our DNA to to begin to try to understand what does it look like on the other side. So to some extent, if we were a community that had not faced disasters like we faced, we would not have, uh, I I think, the wherewithal and the experience to understand what it takes to recover. And I think we're in a position, at least now, with that experience to to, to get back on our feet maybe quicker than some of the other communities because we know the kind of conversations we need to be having. I completely agree with that, Ricky. I can tell it in the way that we have a twice weekly call with the other chamber execs across the coast, along with Ashley Edwards and the Gulf Coast Business Council. We all uh, know what needs to uh, be talked about and what needs to be explored because of our experience. And and you're right, every community is on its own in this and and we do have that resilience factor um i would say at a much higher level because of what we've endured over the past 15 years so before we get into the details of the kind of things that you're involved in um why don't you tell me what life was like at the chamber in the days before you got the bad news that something was going to change the way we we do business sure well things things were a little um uh like a whirling dervish at our chamber before COVID, because as many people know, I'm just 10 months into this job. And at six months, which was in December, I reorganized the structure. And um, and we've been building uh, ever since. Uh, so one of the big differences there in our rebuild is that we have made the chamber more policy driven, which turns out to be uh, great foreshadowing because some of the policy we were focusing on was health and mental health. Because I'm a firm believer that the person who leaves the house in the morning with the health or mental health issues is the same person who makes it to their desk 
at work and those issues don't change. And so we have mm. to be able to help our employees. And so those were just two of the policy issues we were focusing on. And then bam, the biggest health policy issue of the century. Wow. That's unbelievable. So give me a sense of um, the, I, I had the pleasure of serving on the board there for many, many years when I was pro, uh, a publisher of the Sun Herald and uh, just really fell in love, not only with that organization, but the people who are involved in it. They're, they're right. so passionate about their community. And um, I've often referred to uh, Chevron and Ingalls as sort of the bookends on one end and Stennis the bookend on the other end, and then all this amazing stuff going on in between. But Jackson County has had its economic development and small business act together for a very long time. But give us a sense of, of that. Sure. Well, w one of the uh, ways that we had been working together pre-COVID and now has helped us to maintain that is the partnerships with the Jackson County Economic Development Foundation. I know you've had George Freeland and Mary Martha Henson on your show, mm -hmm. um, as well as Brian Fulton, our county administrator and the board of supervisors. So, you know, the world really... Uh, rises and falls on relationships. And that is what we were um, growing and nurturing before COVID uh, spread into our air or into our um, spheres. And it's what we continue to do. We have been working very closely with our partners. Yeah, the uh, George Freeland did a terrific job of explaining how the Jack Jackson County Economic Development Foundation is only as strong as the relationships it has in the community and all of its partners. And he went through a great discussion about that. And, you know, to, to, to be in that job as long as he has been in that job is a real testament to, to George yes. that he has been able to have the, uh, the confidence of so many important leaders over so long a period of time. Jerry St. Pay, the time I spent with Jerry, he mentioned that George has been just a phenomenal leader and and tr tr tremendously supportive of all the efforts in Jackson County to stay focused on creating the kind of economic development atmosphere environment that allows companies to thrive. And the Jackson County Chamber has always been part of that in a big way, hasn't it? Sure. Well, and as you mentioned, Jerry St. Pay, he sits on both our boards. <laughs> so yeah. uh, both, both George and I work very closely with him, as well as a host of other uh, common leaders in, in our area from, as you mentioned, Chevron, Ingalls, Mississippi Power, but also the small businesses. Um, George and I have talked about the economic development a foundation focusing on the sort of big picture industry. And, and we at the chamber are focusing on that community development that goes with the small businesses and, and how it all interconnects. But again, it's about connecting with each other. And that is our greatest strength here in Jackson County. I saw it after Hurricane Katrina. I continue to see it now in 2020. You know, before we get too far from uh, from from uh, Jerry, let me just say this: that my Coast View session with him was fascinating. We yeah. went through yeah. his book, his life. What an incredible life! And here's a guy in his early 80s that really shows no signs of stopping. I mean, he's not a board member <laughs> emeritus. He is an no. active, no. thriving, participating, contributing member of the community from a leadership perspective. And there's literally no sign of stopping him. It's it's really quite impressive, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. In fact, uh, George and I co-hosted a surprise birthday party for him last December when he turned 80. And um, he he really is a treasure. And, and as you and I both have journalism backgrounds, that's always been sort of uh, my connection with him is that he came from that journalism world and worked his way up to president of the shipyard and really i think godfather of jackson county in in the most positive way literally a living legend yeah literally yeah. a living legend yeah. and uh, you know people who are watching this who don't know jerry st pay look up my uh, coast view session with him and, and be ready to be inspired. This is the kind of leaders that we have in this community and they they play f fundamentally important roles in everything that we do. 
Um, so let me do this. We're going to come back. We've got about a little less than two minutes before we get to the break. Why don't you, before, when we come back from the break, we'll go through some of the things that you're involved with today. Okay. But you uh, literally are hosting a blood drive there. Tell me about that real quick. Sure. Uh, Singing River and Ocean Springs hospitals need blood just like any day. So the Ocean Springs Chamber of Commerce and the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce are co-hosting dual drives, one here in Pascagoula and one in Ocean Springs. So when we're done, I'm going to be rolling up my sleeves and giving them some O positive. Good for you. I had a great conversation last week with John McFarlane, who went through yeah. all the efforts underway by the by the Red Cross to make sure that giving is a safe process. They've changed. They don't have the big drives, but they're having smaller, more organized, and certainly the kind that people can actually sign up for and make appointments and all that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for playing that role. We'll be back. We'll be back after this break. Listen live or on demand and watch episodes of Coast View on your laptop, desktop, or on your phone or tablet by going to supertalkmsgulfcoast.com. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have Paige Roberts, the president and CEO of the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce. And we we're talking about the in incredibly important role that Jack Jackson County Chamber of Commerce plays in the Jackson County community, the, the amount of communication that's happening between the various organizations and how they're working together, public and private. Um, a lot of things were going well before we got the bad news. But what, when did it occur to you, Paige, that something something was going that was happening here that was going to change the way you do business well it was right about friday the 13th actually in march uh, on the 12th i had been at an education meeting hosted at singing river health system and the ceo lee bond was addressing the group all a little bit about covid and then the next uh saturday the 14th was when the schools shut down and that's when i realized that our um, workers were going to be pressed for daycare. And so we started working with a local church in Pascagoula to provide some daycare for, for that week. Um, and we went into the mode immediately, Saturday the 14th. Yeah. Incredible. And boy, as this thing hit rapidly, we sort of knew that was coming. But... Um, and, you know, it's right on schedule to what the curve said was going to happen. And hopefully we'll get to the apex and get on the other side of this and begin to understand what life looks like after this. I'm sure you do a lot of thinking about what that might look like. I, I, I do. I, at the, I, I do. But I know that what it looks like post apex is going to depend greatly on what's going on now. And that is why our number one focus has been maintaining communication, connection, and relevance to our members and to the community in whatever way that, that might look like. I mean, for example, this blood drive we're having, which is for our great member Singing River Health System, we went ahead and bought $25 gift cards from all our member restaurants and retail shops as giveaways uh, for drawings here at the blood drive as, as a way to sort of show a solidarity. Um, yeah. You know, $25 gift card isn't a lot, but it is something to show solidarity. So it's that kind of connection identifying what the real needs are, not what the perceived needs are, and then working to meet them. You've also worked with Singing River Hospital Systems on some messaging in Moss Point. Tell me about that. Sure. Well, um, Lee Bond has put out a message to a group of community leaders that they really need help in getting the message across to um, the people of Moss Point especially, because the greater number of cases in our county are found in that city and the greater number of deaths. And quite frankly, there were two deaths on the same street over the weekend. And so er everyone can hear a message. It's, ho it's how do you uh, give that message and, and by whom and what vehicle? And, and that's what we've been working on. So quite frankly, we reached out to several VIPs of Moss Point, including um, 
Tony Sipp, the Major League Baseball player, Terrell Buckley, we're in conversations with Devin Booker to say, hey, this is real. It's killing our people. You've got to stay away from each other. So, Ben, yeah, thank you for doing that. And that's so important. Um, you know, not everybody gets communication the same way. You got to hit on every single cylinder. You got to make sure the message is clear. And um, you know, you're, you're a part of that. And thanks for being a part of that. So you've also, I mean, the CARES Act is going to guide a lot of what you do going forward. So I'm sure there's tons of questions about that. And there's no way to go into all that. But just from a process point of view, tell me about it. It, well, it's a matter of drilling down, as I did. But, you know, that's an 880-some page act. And I was able, with the help of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, to get it drilled down to how we can be the most help to small businesses and to individuals. Yeah, I have Christy Pickering. Do you know Christy, the CPA? Uh -huh, who serves yes. on a couple of corporate boards. She's going to come on Thursday, actually. And Good. she spent time in it. And we're going to walk through it, the whole thing in, in, in great detail through it, probably an entire session. I, oh, I think it would be something you'd want to share with your your members after we yes. get that done. Yes, so, thank you. So let's do this. We're, there, there's, we're running out of time, but let me, uh, let me kind of turn it to you and say, what are your closing thoughts? What's your message to people um, that, that has one of hope? What, what, what do you think about that? Sure. It, it, it is um, drilling down to your inner resiliency and finding your, your patience to stay focused, to be single-minded about staying healthy and being a part of our community as we're using for hashtags Jaxco MS Thrive and Jaxco MS United. That's the message, to stay united and focused. Well, that's that's a that's a wonderful message to hear as we as we begin to sign off. But Paige, I really appreciate your leadership, and I look forward to staying in touch. We can get back together again in a couple of weeks to kind of get an update about where you are. Follow Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on Facebook. Facebook.com/slash Super Talk MS Coast 103.1.